uh, the way that cities and advocates and champions for this kind of work communicate uh, uh, the benefits to this work, communicate in a way that builds support for it, is fundamentally broken. This is this is what sort of Sarah alluded to, where we where we think there's a real status quo within advocacy and communication that that has to be changed fundamentally, and it, and it starts with you know, uh, creating communications and crafting language around this kind of work that resonates with people who are never going to show up and do the thing that you actually want to sort of see done, right? It's, it's, it's communicating to people who, that, that who are never going to go to the farmer's market, but the farmer's market is good for them. It's about communicating to drivers uh, who are never going to get out of their car, that a bike lane is good for them. That's that's the primary audience because those are the people who, when they read about a bicycle lane in the newspaper, they call the mayor's office or they email their city council member or they show up to the public meeting to say, this doesn't benefit me. Why would we, why would we have this in our neighborhood? We don't, too, too, too often our communications, our messaging are crafted towards people who already get it, right? It's like, it's it's the preaching preaching to the choir. And I, there's a, there's a really like, I'm not sure who said this or who to attribute it to, but I, while we were doing this research, one of our um, consulting partners had this phrase that said, good messaging is not what we want to tell people. Good messaging is telling people what they want to hear consistent with who we are. And I think that's a, that's a really nuanced way to sort of think about, you know, becoming better communicators of this work is that we have to, we have to reach people fundamentally where they are right. and make it, and make it work for us rather than convincing them that they're wrong and that we're right. And that we have a better perspective on this. And so, and so city thread, you know, a, a, a majority of the work that we're actually doing is this coalition building. But, but, it, but within that, you know, you have to sort of naturally understand what is it what does it mean to collaborate with other people how do you how do you talk to other organizations how do you find other community leaders how do you communicate with elected officials there's very nuanced ways to sort of you know to do that the strategies behind that um, um, differ and I think historically it's been approached from a very antagonistic standpoint right the way to get things done is to is to antagonize whoever is opposing this thing until they until they relent, right? Or compromise, or or delay, or decide not to do this thing. It's it's all it's all driven in this very competitive landscape. And City Thread just our fundamental belief is that it doesn't have to be competitive. We can actually all get what we want um, by working together and accomplishing much broader goals than we maybe initially set out to do. Right. If there are certain communities or identities not at your table, those communities and identities are definitely at a table, right? Um, there's amazing things that happen across our cities um, that just happen um, not as collaboratively due to you know a variety of reasons and barriers. And so I think it is trying to really figure out how to humbly and respectfully um, engage and introduce um, yourself as a human being to another human being and identify ways that um, a shared goal can be created that that a farmer's market can you know benefit um, you know my wine club as well as the organization that is helping to get food on people's table that can't afford it to the organization that is hoping to um, you know, increase the economic development opportunities on their city's main street. So I think that it really is just looking at the community as a whole and also acknowledging that, you know, people are organizing um, and they can combine that organizing power um, to a larger goal. It's really about um, working across all the people in your community, all, you know, the networks upon networks, the the other organizations working towards something that's aligned, but not exactly the same. And it works for creating that shared vision. It works for um, building what you want to build. It works for having a more effective uh, case to be made for support from philanthropic organizations. It creates that sustainability in terms of the the ongoing nature of what you're creating that, that Kyle talked about. I mean, all of this 
like that is why we're city thread. F- people are the fabric of our communities. And until you're engaging and actively connecting people and connecting with people and elevating their voices to create what they want, you know, that is what a community is, right? That's what we're trying to help with. A lot of what we've discussed is around sort of like, what do you do in order to to accomplish something, right? And, and sort of like, how, what kind of communications do you need? What kind of organization do you need? Who leads it? Where, where do you need resources? I, I think I would just end this by saying that the, that the thing that you actually do is as important as how you actually get it done. It's uh, the, the network that you build or the project that you build or the thing that you accomplish is as much a communications tool as a billboard hanging on on the side of a building, or, or, or a billboard, or a bus wrap, you know, driving by, uh, you know, a neighborhood ten times a day, the, the communications doesn't end with just being a good messenger, having a great logo, or a catchphrase, or a great website for people to go, because fundamentally, at the end of the day, this is about building momentum and building trust in something. And the outcome of that process has to be believed by all of the partners, has to be believed by people who are who are now sort of experiencing this. And oftentimes where we see sometimes cities really fail is that they deliver a project that's a little bit watered down than the original version, that doesn't quite achieve the goals that they said it was going to, right? If we're going to build a bicycle lane because we're going to get more people bicycling, but that bicycle lane isn't isn't protected. It kind of dumps you out into a really busy intersection, and then no one rides it. Um, as a result, it's really hard to convince people the next time around that the next bike lane is going to do that same exact thing. And so, communications is a is an ongoing process, and communities have to remember that it's not just about having great graphics. Uh, it's not just about sort of you know getting your tagline into people's mouths, but the the product of your work um, is just as important as as how you got there, and that's how you sustain momentum um, into the future. Reminds me of some conversations that you and I had uh, several years ago about storytelling, <laughs> and so uh, the ability to to do some storytelling, the ability to uh, to celebrate the wins that you have out there, and uh, to your point, is making sure that the thing that is uh, being pushed through is is also something that really resonates and 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 sends that message that this is successful. This was worth the the trouble. This was worth the investment. These visuals are just really really fun and exciting. This is a Shoal Creek Boulevard uh, example. I do have a video that I produced from the community celebration ride from this particular facility. It's really a game changer too. And there's some really neat features to this that aren't just bike features. I mean, there's there's plenty of pedestrian crossings. There's some uh, wonderful rain gardens that have been uh, in, you know put into here. This is through a sensitive area of the Shoal Creek area. So water management, stormwater management is an issue. So this isn't a single subject initiative or project. 